Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking the CBX oil pump that we removed from the the engine in the previous video and disassembling it, for, doing a full disassembly, clean up, and then I'm going to bench test uh, all of the tolerances to make sure they're within the specs that the shop manual uh, calls out. First of all, on a vise, you should have these little rubber uh, attachments uh, whenever you put a nice soft aluminum part in there. So here's the oil pump as we removed it from the engine. If you look inside there, there's all kinds of sediment and sludge in there as you can see there. And that's not good, to say the least. So the the way that the oil pump functions is that it rotates there. They've got little propellers in there or, or uh, um, whatever you wanna call them that, that rotate and pump the oil through the oil lines and, the, and circulate through the engine. And when you have all that sediment in there, it gives it kind of a, you know, the, this pump really does not turn smoothly. Now, in the in the shop manual, they'll show you what the tolerances are. You've got uh, uh, six thousandths and fourteen thousandths are the service limits. So the first thing you want to do is disassemble the pump. And, the, and uh, uh, one of the things is you want to remove the plungers, as I'm doing here. One of them is held in with a uh, cotter pin. And that's pretty tough cotter pin, so it takes a little bit of work to get that out of there. And I want to save this one because I want to reuse it. And it's spring-loaded. So you pull the spring out and there's a plunger inside there. And again, the plunger normally would just fall right out of there, but as you can see, it's full of sediment and grit and grime. The other plunger is spring loaded. And again, you have to be sure, be, be careful that the spring doesn't go flying off when you remove this nut. It's under a pretty heavy pressure. Then the plunger comes out. But again, this, this pump has so much sediment in it that everything is very sticky. So you just kind of work the plunger out of there. And that's it. Again, it's all sticky and so I'll clean all these parts up. So then once you get that out, you go ahead and remove the other cover. And here are your propellers in there. Now, what you do is you rotate these so that, the, that each uh, apex there lines up, just like the shop manual shows. Line it up right in the center. Then you get your feeler gauge, starting with the six thousandths. Now on this pump, it's really tight. So I am able to get the six thousandths in there, but it's really tight. So that's a good thing because it's well within the factory specs then. And 
You can see how tight it is. So then you just keep rotating it around and you, and you check each one. And you do that to both sides. Keep rotating it, checking it, rotating it. Then once that's done, you switch over to your 14 thousandths and you check the outer tolerance around the edge. And I can barely, barely get this feeler gauge in there, so it's well within tolerance. So then uh, again, more sediment. You want to clean all that out of there, completely clean. So then you just go ahead and disassemble the entire thing. Try to kind of keep the pieces together so you don't lose any, especially the, the, uh, all the small pieces. I just kind of put them all back together again. So here's the pump body that's completely stripped down. And again, there's just sediment everywhere. So then I take it over to the parts washer and this is where the parts washer shines, gets everything really clean, flush it all out. And I take the wooden handle and scrape the gasket material off of there. Now it's perfectly clean everywhere. You want to make sure it's all out of there. You do the same to each and every single little part, everything. Once everything is cleaned up, then you lay it all out. And if you'll notice, each one of the uh, items have different thicknesses to them. Each one of the propellers and, and so on. And the body, it's obvious which goes where. You have your thin side and your thicker side. So then once I, I start putting everything back in, I, I get a little oil can and I lubricate everything as it goes back together again. And again, you want to put these back in the same way they came out. And in this case, there's a, there's a, uh, a little timing mark, or it's not really a timing mark, but it's a indicator mark on there, as you can see right there. You can see how nice and freely it turns now that it's all cleaned up and lubricated. Again, you want to put the little mark on the outside the way it came out, just like that one. So then you put your locating pins back in. Just don't lose them. They're easy to lose. Up, oh, gotta put this, put 
put the shaft through first before you put that locating pin in. The pins fall out easily. And you want to line up the notch with the pin. And make sure you hold everything in, otherwise it just falls out. And again, the locating pins are easily, they easily fall out, so you gotta make sure. <clears throat> and that one fell on the ground. Now on this one, the the, uh, the little mark went on the inside. That's the way it came out. So you want to put it back in the same way. Again, you line up the notch. I'll make sure everything's lubricated well. You know, I just want to check to make sure that it rotates freely. Then you want to lubricate the covers. Keep checking to make sure still rotates freely. And then tighten the bolts up. You don't have to over tighten them, just make them tight, a little, you know, hand tight. Then you want to check, make sure it still turns freely. And now it turns real nice and smooth compared to what it was. So then you reinstall the plungers. And I always lubricate those before I put them back in. And again, they go back in the same way they came out, obviously. Don't forget the washer and then the cotter pin. And this is a really tedious 
process because you have to hold the spring down and get the cotter pin in there. And it's a little tricky, but patience. And again, it's pretty tough cotter pin, so it takes a little bit of work to get it back the way it was from the factory. And that's it. That's back in there properly. Then the other one, now the shop manual shows this plunger and the spring reverse the way they're supposed to go in. The manual shows the spring going in first and then the plunger, but it's really the other way around. You put the plunger in first, then the spring. So the shop manual's wrong in that. And you put the cap back on. Then you tighten it back up, and again, you don't have to make it super tight, just hand tight. And that's it. It's back together. Make sure it still turns smoothly. No hang-ups. No grinding. It's nice and clean inside and out ready to put back in the bike. And these are, I just put the screws back where they go for the, uh, for the uh, pickup tube and the screen, which I have to order a new one because as you saw in the previous video, the screen was destroyed. So that's it for this video. I hope it it helps <clears throat> you understand how the oil pump works on the CBX. And please like, subscribe, and share, and leave comments. Thank you. We'll see you next time. And after you subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll get notified uh, after I've uh, uploaded each video. So again, thank you for watching.